My guest is one of the world's leading biblical counselors. Her life's work has impacted the field of Christian counseling, addressing contemporary concerns in more than 60 countries on six continents. She hosts two popular radio broadcasts. Hope for the Heart is heard on 900 radio outlets around the world. And Hope in the Night was two hours. It's now a one hour call-in program, 30 years of ministry, so where do we begin with June Hunt here from Dallas, Texas? Well, I want to go to the journey mm. that shaped, amazingly shaped, this wise and compassionate heart, June, because uh, what impacted your growing up years was a complete distortion of love, of home, of family. You know, I didn't start telling that story until about uh, 10 years ago because I, for years I felt like I had a cork in my throat and I couldn't get out except for maybe a couple of friends uh, in adulthood. But uh, my father had three families going on at the same time. A polygamist. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. I mean, I didn't um, read that anywhere, but yeah, three wives at once is mm -hmm. polygamous. Well, and not necessarily married though. Oh. So, uh, and, but, but supposedly, you know, so it was very confusing. And uh, then when my dad was, um, uh, his, his first wife died. And then we moved into his house. I was 12. And then they married about 11 months later, my mother and father. And um, it was very confusing because, see, I actually grew up with a fictitious last name. I was... June Wright, and then uh, I couldn't figure out when I would switch over, so I just finally thought, hmm, somewhere when I was 13, I'll just become June Hunt. And uh, But in a dysfunctional family, people don't talk. The family members really don't confront issues in a healthy way. And so you try to figure out, what do I do? What do I not say? And I was very covert. I didn't have a friend because who, who would have my situation? You knew there were scandalous secrets yes. under this roof. You, you just kind of know not to talk about things, even though you're told nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're just to accept. And it was very painful because my dad was actually um, double my mom's age. And, and abusive to her. Yes. That, uh, that was, I hated him. And you had a very interesting logical process of coming to this decision about really hating him? Well, when someone is cruel, and I have a very, uh, I had a very tender-hearted mother and endearing, and her, her, mother, her father had died when she was three, so I later realized he was a father figure, you know, my, my real dad, and, and yet double that age. But every, everything was a dictatorship. It was like, you will, not have any time with your mother once dinner is over. We were not to speak at the table at dinner, but after dinner, then we had no time. So it crushed mother, but she didn't know what to do. And so it was helpful, hugely helpful, when I became an authentic Christian. I, uh, I, I saw godly men, not like this man that was my father, and, uh, but I knew I didn't have that. And I, and, um, I thought it was wrong to forgive, why? Why could you? Would how could you forgive? That would be wrong because isn't God a God of justice? Mm -hmm. And so there's no apology with now his other women too. So really, it gave me a heart for people who get into like my mother into these relationships because there's a need that hasn't been met or there's an assumption, and mother was filled with shame and heartache. All of that was uh, truthfully preparatory for me to have compassion in all these unusual situations. And very candidly, before I became a Christian, I think right at that time I was de trying to decide. But and I thought, why would a loving God allow allow a man to cause so many people so much pain? And later, I realized. Um, later, much later, oh. Look at the topics that I cover. Look, look, look what we have. We have domestic violence. Well, my father uh, only once beat me, only once, but 
it was stunning and it shut me up. It did shut me up. And so I didn't learn how to confront. So we have now material on confrontation. Um, uh, all kinds of verbal and emotional abuse is one of our most top purchased items, verbal and emotional abuse. But we need to have victory over living with a victim mentality, just assuming, well, I don't have the power to change anything. You didn't as a child, but now you do as an adult. Hmm. Huh. You did confront your dad and you were shipped off to boarding school. Yeah. Uh, so many reasons for a life trapped in bitterness and regret and resentment and the hatred that you uh, ultimately did deal with. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, God immediately plunked you into leadership with youth. Oh, yes. Uh, 600 mm -hmm. of them only. <laughs> and so, I mean, here's the marvel. A, a woman who has never married or had your own mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. and you have become a globally respected source of wisdom on the problems you've mentioned and, well, I think there are, are there a hundred in your classic Counseling Through the Bible, 100 Biblical Counseling Keys. We now call it a Biblical Counseling Library because it was Bill Bright who said, he looked at our material, especially on anorexia and bulimia because the ministry of Campus Crusade for Christ, now called Crew, they have so many college students and so many of them struggle with anorexia well, people die of anorexia. So, of course, we had to have that topic. And so, even when a, a particular topic isn't named in the Bible, there are principles. Mm -hmm. And we can have victory over whatever the topic is if we have Christ living in us. If He's in us, then He empowers us. He who is all-powerful, Jesus, empowers us to literally be the persons God created us to be. And that means you're going to change from what you thought you had to do in childhood and he frees you because the Bible says, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I'm an adult, I put childish ways behind me. And many times in childhood, we think, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that because of unhealthy parenting there and then later you realize oh I do have the freedom to and then here are specifics uh, I have the freedom to confront or I have the freedom to do what is right and not be confined by what I saw only in childhood mm -hmm. so we can't help it children can't help whatever their birth experience is but you can learn from it because God even tells us that what we experience in the past, um, whatever is pain, it can be pain with a purpose. Mm. Repurpose and, pain. Yes, mm. and empathetic pain so that you have empathy, new empathy for what many people don't have empathy for, meaning if we've gone through anything very, very hard, which you have, I have, we have an advantage of making uh, our hearts are softened toward others who have that same pain. And, and it's not just head knowledge, it's heart experience. So that we are told to mourn with those who mourn, to weep with those who weep. So we can identify based on the pain of the past, now this is what God actually says we are to do. This is a story of beauty from ashes. God's exchange program is no fairy tale. He's able to write a new story in your life no matter what you've been through. But if you hold on to your history, you will miss your destiny. Let June's vulnerable story encourage you today. Our prayer partners, they're hope dealers and they would love to pray with you. Why not call right now? Maybe there's something you've kept secret all your life that you've never told anyone. And you know, Satan dines on that which we withhold from God. You could begin a new story today. Why not let us help you? And watch for June's return. She'll be back. <laughs>